Hey everyone, welcome back to our next tutorial in the series of our uh, Tetris clone game. This is Chris, and uh, we are going to cover um, how to actually uh, spawn another Tetramino after one has landed. Um, and we're going to do this in the, um, well, in, in several parts actually. Uh, we're going to start with our, uh, our game class, and uh, we're going to create a new method and that method is going to be called spawn next tetramino okay and also is going to be a public method um, it's not going to return anything so it's going to be void so spawn next tetramino okay all right so the way we spawn a prefab um, or instantiate a prefab rather uh, like I told you uh, earlier, um, in the uh, very first uh, tutorial, we created a resources folder and we placed all our prefabs inside of a prefabs folder within the resources folder. The resources folder is included when uh, the game is compiled and built so that all those resources, whether they're in the scene or not, can be instantiated um, from within the code at runtime. So, and the way to do that is um, we're gonna, uh, so, we're going to actually instantiate a game object. Okay, so we tell it we want a game object. We're going to call it next Tetramino. Okay, and um, we're going to uh, we're going to cast the game object to let uh, instantiate know that we're instantiating a game object. And uh, the way to do this is it wants an um, it wants a game object, right, to instantiate. So what we're going to pass it is uh, we're going to do resources dot load okay and actually you know what I lied before we can finish this we're actually going to need to create a, uh, a method that is going to generate a, uh, a string that is going to be the name of the next tetramino so Let's create a, uh, a, a, um, a method that's going to return a string. Okay. I'm going to call this get random tetramino. Okay. And uh, basically, we've got seven pieces. Okay. So we are going to generate a, uh, a random integer. Call this random tetramino. And we're going to use random.range between one and eight. So that's gonna give us seven integers. And uh, we're gonna set string random tetramino name. I'm gonna set that equal to tetramino t, uh, just to initialize it, okay? And um, the way we're gonna do this is we're gonna use a switch. And the switch is going to test te uh, random tetramino Okay, which is our integer, our random integer that we generated. Okay, and uh, the uh, the cases are going to be one through seven. So case one, okay, uh, random tetramino name is going to equal tetramino t. I'm gonna break out. And case two, random tetramino. Tetramino name is going to Tetramino long. And you can uh, assign uh, any names to any of the numbers. Uh, this is just how I'm doing it. Um, you can, it doesn't really even matter because the numbers are randomly generated. So this is just to assign numbers to names. That's all it's for. Tetramino square break. And uh, you have to remember to break out of the switch once you've got a name. Um, otherwise, it's just going to continue down to the next one. Down here. Tetramino. And make sure you spell these correctly um, because they have to be the exact names of the, uh, the prefabs that are in the resources folder. Otherwise, they're not going to load. Random Tetramino name. Uh, let's do Tetramino L. Break. Okay, six. 
random tetramine name tetramine uh, so s and break out and last case seven and tetramine name equals tetramine z and break out okay and then we're going to simply return a random tetramino name. All right. So just to cover this uh, again, um, we create an integer named random tetramino. We are getting a random range integer between one and eight. So we can have one, two, three, four, five, six, or seven. We're creating a string named random tetramino name, and we are initializing it just with tetramino t. Um, which doesn't matter because this is going to get changed here. We're uh, starting a switch case statement and that's going to test against the random tetramino, which is the random integer that we generated using random.range. And then we're going to test each case, one through seven. And when we get one that equals, we break out and we return the random tetramino name. Okay, And that's going to be used with our spawn next tetramino uh, method. So here, again, We've created a game object called next tetramino. We're casting game objects to instantiate. And then uh, we're using resources.load. And for the uh, the resource name, we're simply going to call get random tetramino, which returns the string. So that's our name. And then we're going to specify type of to uh, let the uh, instantiate method know that we're instantiating a game object. And uh, for the position, we're going to pass a new vector 2. And uh, our tetramino pieces are always going to start in x position of 5.0 and 20.0f in the y. And uh, for uh, the rotation, we're going to pass in quaternion dot identity, which is basically its current rotation. Uh, so we're not going to even mess with that because they're already uh, rotated properly. Um, and that's basically all we need to do in the game class for now. So this spawn next tetramino class is going to be called from our tetramino, or sorry, the spawn next tetramino method is going to be called from our tetramino class. It's going to instantiate by loading a random tetramino from this method. And um, it's going to position it here. And once the tetramino is in the scene, its class gets instantiated. It's going to start checking for user input. And even if we're not moving it around, it's going to default to this or clause in the uh, if statement, and it's going to start moving our piece down. Okay. So now, at this point, we should be able to, um, hang on, we need to do one thing to actually get this whole process started, and that is to call in the game method spawn next tetramino, because we actually have to, uh, like I said, we have to get this started. Spawn next tetramino. Okay, so now we should be good to go. We got our script saved. Uh, let's go into Unity and let's get rid of the uh, tetramino piece we've got in here. Um, delete that out. Okay, so now um, here's a warning. It's basically telling us that uh, next tetramino is assigned, but its value is never used, and that's fine. Um, the reason that I assigned it an actual game object to begin with is because uh, I, I thought that you guys might want to use that as um, you know a starting point for doing some extra stuff which we'll cover a little bit later but anyways let's go ahead and click play all right so as you can tell nothing's happening uh, and the reason nothing's happening is because um, the name that we're returning is only the string and not the entire path of the resource so at first it looks in the root of the resources folder for that string of the that represents the name of the prefab. Well, it's not going to find it here because it's in the prefabs folder. So we need to go back to um, our script, and instead of returning just the name, we need to actually add in prefabs and slash because that is the uh, the full path to our prefabs. Okay. So I'm just copying and pasting this to all of the names. Okay. So now. Let's go ahead and save that. Go back into Unity and click play. The error should go away, which it did, and we've got our piece falling. All right, so we can move that around. 
Rotate it. Okay, everything's working 100% as it should. All right. So in the next part, we're actually going to cover uh, the piece landing and then the next piece uh, spawning. So stay tuned for that and I'll see you guys soon.